Hello students, hope you are doing well and uh, I welcome you all in the day two practice to pass webinar for paper PM performance management and I am your trainer, your tutor Haris Anif uh, from the Banis School of Accountancy. This is my WhatsApp number. Most of you people are having my WhatsApp number and today we are going to resume this webinar from the area where we had ended yesterday. Yesterday it was day one. We had the introduction session, then we had a little motivational session and we discussed about absorption costing and activity based costing and today and we also started the topic target costing and I have told you in the last class which was yesterday that one case OTQ you should assume you should expect from the costing area and we will be doing we will be doing a, a few OTQs case based OTQs because this will help you out to secure your at least 10 marks to secure your at least 10 marks right and uh, before going to start this um, uh, before going to resume this thing I would like to give you a very quick and a short recap of the topic target costing and target costing is about that you do not set your selling price target costing is does not mean that you set your a selling price target costing does mean that you obtain the selling price from the market right and um, we had a discussion on this target costing that target costing is that uh, you'd pick up the selling price from the market and that is known as the pull system that is known as the pull system that you obtain the selling price from the market you set your target profit and you calculate the cost which is expected to be that is a target cost and then and then you are calculating your own expected cost your own estimated cost and then you will be comparing it in order to calculate the cost cap right in order to calculate the cost cap that we had completed in the last class which was yesterday and today we are going to this handout is already uh, attached in your handout section uh, you you people can uh, download it from there and whatever the annotations I am making I will also be sharing and um, I'm expecting that most of you or probably all of you might be in the uh, WhatsApp group if not then the link of WhatsApp group would be shared no problem at all and uh, for testing purpose can you people please confirm me that my voice screen video is all clear please reply in the question box be interactive uh, am I audible my voice screen video is all clear all of you right now that's now that's good and what I do believe that whatever the paper you are attempting whatever the paper you are you are attempting you should uh, you should uh, practice the uh, most recent questions you should practice the most recent questions as well if I can guide you accordingly then you should practice at least the last two years since you are appearing in September 2022 okay and um, you should practice for 2020 and 2021 papers at least uh, no matter you can also even practice the previous questions like 2016 2017 18 19 based on the contents and the complexity of the questions you should practice but at least uh, since your 60% uh, uh, paper is based on MCQs and OTQs uh, kind of question so you should practice those MCQs and these are available in the examiner report yes examiner report and I will also be uh, solving those case OTQs and MCQs here there's a question and if I remember that I had given you the task yesterday that you people should you people should try this question right you should try this question and this is a question from I have extracted from examiner report it's Derask company it's from September December 2021 as you can see that uh, this question probably is not might not be available in your official exam kits since it is the uh, one of the recent question or it quite may be possible that it is available so because there are more than one official publishers that's what I'm taking I'm talking about so 
use your acc resources as well to practice well for your exam this is the question and the question name is the rask company and what i told you what i guide, guided you yesterday regarding the case otqs technique especially that you need to scroll it down you need to scroll it down just scroll down yes analyzing introduction growth maturity you are clicking the topic of life cycle costing then move ahead um, just go through the yes target costing initial profit margin and all that stuff now i came to know now i came to know that uh, this is the this is the question which is related to the topic target costing this is a question which is related to the topic target costing and uh, so you should read you should read this question you should then read this question uh, considering the target costing in mind now what is the target costing we had discussed that target costing is that you pull up the selling price from the market then you add up your you deduct your target profit to calculate the target cost and then cost gap and all that stuff and simultaneously at the same time you should focusing on the thing that there are many ways to reduce the cost gap there are many ways to reduce the cost gap so whenever you are studying the for the case based otq you should assume that you should assume that all the uh, all the concepts of target costing or whatever the topic is under consideration can be examined so read it read the question accordingly <clears throat> so you should read the question accordingly sorry for that now students i am giving you just one minute window in order to read this question from start starting till this paragraph please read this uh, information very carefully All right. Now I'm going to read this question. Uh, the Rask is a global consumer electronics manufacturer. It sells its own brand of smartphones. It sells its own brand of uh, smartphones and um, uses that whatever the information is. Main point is that they are using the target costing. Deep ad feasibility study results. The board of the Rask Co has conducted a feasibility study in order to decide whether or not to launch whether or not either yes or no whether or not to launch a new device the d-pad in 20x9 that means it would be 2019 the d-pad will have three years life cycle our next topic for today's agenda and first of all i would like to uh, make it clear that what is the agenda for today it is basically target costing life cycle costing throughput accounting all right and then we will be moving towards performance measurement and then a few other mcqs these are basically the total agenda for all the four days including today we have three days uh, till saturday and uh, we are trying a level best to uh, uh, to catch at least those areas which are very important for the examining point of view right so these are the basically and simple agenda the d-pad will have three years life cycle it's three years life cycle over which a total of 80 million units will be sold total of 80 million units will be sold and you can and you can witness it from there that is 8 14 56 and 2 this would become 80 million it is in millions right now the variable manufacturing and selling cost is currently estimated 123 per unit the total fixed cost including investment and overhead is budgeted to be 3360 million over the whole life cycle the initial estimate of the selling price included in the feasibility study was calculated to ensure profit markup of 60 percent now this is the market research analysis i am now moving towards i am ignoring all the other information and first of all i am going to read this question number one in this question number one 
in this question one which, which is not specifically related to the case all the way uh, it can be examined in a knowledge based stuff as well this kind of a question so you should read this uh, these two requirements which of the following statement about the use of target costing at Darask is or are true number one it relies on just in time process in order to work the answer is no the answer is no why why because in target costing there is a very important focus on the cost reduction and to maximize the profit there is the important attention to maximize the profit in target to maximize or you can say to achieve the target profit right there is a there is a thorough attention towards maximization of the profit and to achieve the target profit and target costing focuses target costing focuses on cost reduction not the just in time just in time is the just in time is the mindset of the throughput accounting which we are going to study it later on so it relies on just in time and what is just in time actually just in time is actually says that uh, you do not need to hold your you do not need to hold too much closing inventory when you will be having too much closing inventory there would be the chance of increasing the holding cost and so your profitability could be reduced because if and your profitability could be reduced so just in time just in time is actually says that uh, arrange produce the material when produce the raw material when there is the when there is the uh, when there is the demand all right so just in time is actually just in time is actually the concept being focused on by you can say throughput accounting number two it can be used alongside life cycle costing and planning the answer is yes that's only two only now what is this thing what is life cycle you are aware of the life cycle principles you might be aware right life cycle is actually the estimated life of the product now if i am estimating three years or four years life of my product if i am estimating three years or four years life of my product so the, co the concept of target costing can be easily applied the concept of target costing can be easily applied right the concept of target costing can be easily applied that is that is within the three years of time span that is within the three years of time span i should i should achieve my target profit within the three years of time uh, within the three years of time span i should i should achieve my target profit right i should achieve my target profit so this is actually the thing the concept of target costing and the concept of life cycle costing can be used together the concept of target and life cycle costing can be used together right so here you can see that it's basically life cycle plus target the answer is absolutely yes number two so here it is um, here it is a, a, a simple solution number two now the next point is that what is the initial selling price of d pad from feasibility study from the feasibility study to the nearest hold to the nearest whole dollar right what is the initial selling price from the d pad feasibility study report so that means you should refer that means you should refer the feasibility study report right this was the only thing we should need to focus on number one the variable manufacturing and selling overhead is estimated dollar 123 per unit and double three six zero million is actually the total fixed cost total fixed cost and in the whole life cycle there are 80 million units there are 80 million units so i need to calculate the initial selling price based on per unit i need to calculate the initial selling price based on per unit there's a selling price it's not the total seller it's the selling price so if i can say that my variable cost is 123 and my fixed cost is what is the fixed cost what is the fixed cost fixed cost is actually 3360 million and that is the total fixed cost i need to apportion it over number of units 80 million so that would become 42 that would become 42 so it's 123 plus double three six zero million divided by 80 million so it would become 42 and you can see that 
your cost is 123 plus 42 that's 123 plus 42 that is 165 so 165 plus you should add 60 percent profit markup 60 percent profit markup and that is dollar 264 right so 264 is my answer so 264 is my answer and that is the initial selling price i should need to uh, quote and this is my simple answer so you will be writing 264 in your blank right this is to 2021 exam question this is 2021 exam question you should focus on so i guess it was uh, quite easy and attainable uh, question now let's move ahead based on market research analysis now the question is turning to the uh, to the another side based on market research analysis now the question is saying based on market research analysis what is the total cost gap see what is the total cost gap they are not talking about students they are not talking about the cost gap per unit they are talking about the total cost gap total total cost gap right so they are talking about the total cost gap what is the total cost gap of dpat if Darask wants to achieve target profit of 45 million now you should use the information which is based which is given in the market research analysis so i will be using that information right i will be using that information market research analysis now now this is basically the market research analysis report market research analysis and here it is will you people please look at uh, look uh, look into this information just have a quick look now you should put your efforts this is selling price per unit and this is total sale volume the question is asking me for the total cost gap the question is not asking for the cost gap per unit they are asking for the total cost gap and we should need to calculate the total cost total sale revenue total 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 whatever the working i will be doing that will be on the total figures so the point to be noted is that the board decided to commission some market research uh, to determine the price customers would be willing to pay sales volume and sale price were estimated for various stages of the deep life lifecycle as follows and these are the information based on market research the board has approved that development whatever and the total cost does not exceed 13,000 million that is the important punchline for me now let's move ahead and it is written about the selling price and number of units selling price and the number of units and i should i should make it a very total calculation i should make it a very total calculation right so first of all i'm going here for the total thing right so i want from the market research analysis that's intro introduction growth maturity and decline you should calculate the total sales you should calculate students the total sale and that was 8 into 425 that was 14 into 300 that was 56 into 220 and that was 2 into 120 these are the figures right so i need the total sale value i need the total sale value please calculate this i'm also calculating here 
8 into 425 plus 14 into 300 plus 56 into 220 plus 2 into 120 it is it is now 20160 it is my 20160 it is 20160 and what is the target profit it's 45% That's dollar nine zero. Seven two. And that is target cost. So if you want to earn. If you want to earn this target profit, your cost should be double one zero double eight, right? And what is the estimated cost? The estimated cost is this 13,000 million. The estimated cost is this 13,000 million. And you should compare with this thing. You should compare with this thing. The estimated cost. It's 13,000. So what is the cost gap? They actually need the cost gap in total. That's one nine one two. So B is the option. B is the ultimately correct option for this thing. See that what we had calculated. We had calculated the total target cost and total estimated cost and total cost gap. That's very simple. That's very simple, right? Now, now let's move ahead for uh, the theoretical aspects of this question. We have to finish this and we have to move forward for the life cycle costing as well. And here it is saying that the following proposals have been made in order to close the cost gap. Now, listen that whenever you are trying to close down the cost gap, you should focus on cost reduction. You should focus on the cost reduction, right? So please read. Please read these three points for the proposals in order to close down the cost cap. Please read these three proposals and identify which one is the appropriate option for this. Which one is the appropriate for this? Number one. Number one is that introduce 24 hour working in the factories where D pad is made in order to increase the production and build inventory. Would this would this be useful to build up the inventory? No. 24 hour working facility would increase your cost. Now you could be arguing that you could be arguing that sir We should increase our production in order to allow the fixed cost on, on per unit to be reduced now I can do that but my demand in this specific question, but my demand in this specific question is of Only 80 million units and that 80 million units are my estimation why I will be making too much efforts to build the inventory. So this option would be crossed. And if one is getting crossed, that means D is crossed. A is crossed. We have left with two and three. See that we have left between two and three. And since option point number two is in option C and is in option B as well. So that means second statement is absolutely correct. Without reading that thing, I concluded that second statement is right, right? And so we just have to uh, focus. Now these are the cracks and tricks to solve the MCQs. If you are successful in such kind of the strategy, you can you are uh, you are supposed to solve this question very comfortably. But I'm not going uh, for uh, giving you the tricks and guess the answer. I will also simultaneously recommend you to read the question 
understand the requirement read the question understand the requirement and try to apply the concept you are in the applied skills module you are not in the knowledge base module you are in the applied skills module right now incorporate quality assurance incorporate quality assurance inspections into manufacturing process to reduce faulty units to reduce faulty units you are introducing quality inspection thing to reduce the faulty units and see that if the units are getting reduced the faulty units and you are you are saving it from the cost so that is that is basically the cost saving that is basically the what cost saving so that my units will not be faulty number three increase the sale and marketing spend in order to boost the sale volume of the pad come on it is a life cycle principle if you will if you will spend too much if you will spend too much but this is focusing on the cost reduction so this is not the appropriate strategy across and option c is the correct one option c is the correct one because point number three is suggesting me Point number three suggesting me to increase to increase the spend on the marketing, but that concept of target costing is saying that reduce your cost. So this is not applicable in order to close the cost cap. You have to reduce the cost cap. All the way you can spend more on marketing. It's not your choice. But in order to close the cost gap, you should at least reduce your cost. And this is not the good strategy. Next, the next one is the last. MCQ for this case study in relation to the use of target costing for all the retail outlets Which of the directors statements are correct now I should go up Please read these things Please read this thing These uh, statements of of the three directors and simultaneously remember that while you are reading these statements of the directors just note it down who is saying correct Okay, now I'm going to read all these information. Director X. The board has this, uh, been discussing whether it is possible to use target costing in relation to the retail outlets. The following statements have been made. Number one, number two, number three. Director X is saying that target costing cannot be used because it is difficult to estimate target selling price in the services. He is giving me the absolute statement that it cannot be used. We will be studying target costing can be used in services, but target costing can be used in services, but it is difficult that it does not mean that it is impossible. It is difficult, but challenging, but the director accessing it cannot be used. All right, so this is the. Is giving you the wrong statement. So product product X sorry director X Director X is here cross He's even here cross. So that means we are having Y and Z and Z here So that means Z is in both Z is correct. So we have to read Y. But I will be reading reading both The target costing is most useful when the what is being developed and has high degree of variability in services not at all you know services can be changed so there is no consistency in the performance criteria there is no consistency in the performance criteria the services may not be standard all the time right so change of new services so he's saying that target costing is useful in the changing no the it is useful when the product is at stable condition 
It's talking about changing. No. So target costing when developing new services is difficult. Yes, he's saying difficult because services are intangible and not always possible. He is correct, but he's saying that it cannot be used. He's saying that it cannot be used. He's giving the absolute statement. He's giving the absolute statement, right? So he's saying that it cannot be used and this does not make sense. So director Z is right. That's the only. <clears throat> All right. Now. Target costing and services. Services you all know, like your educational institutes, like your bank, like hospitals, etc. Can target costing be used in services? Can target costing be used in services? The answer is absolutely yes, but it is not. But it is not. It does not mean that it cannot be used. It can be used, but there are some challenges. So target costing and services. It can be used in the services. Can be used in the services. But there are. But there are some. Challenges. I mean. Difficulty. But there are some challenges that means difficulty. You know what? I can give you the practical example. The airfare, I mean the ticket price of aeroplane changes. It changes on daily basis. The rates of the flight is different at the peak hours, at early in the morning, in the late nights, in the afternoon. The rates get changed. Many of the restaurants, many of the restaurants, they are charging different prices. Many of the hotels are charging different prices. For example, there is a four star hotel and there's a five star hotel. There are two five star hotels and the prices of both hotels could be different. It based on season because they are providing the services. Internet providers services, educational teachers services. In services, there is a diff uh, there is a, there are different selling prices and selling price is difficult to obtain. And selling price is difficult to obtain. All right. So there are some uh, challenges that different selling prices. Of service providers. And difficulty to take the selling price one more thing this is the service one more thing this is the service they have um, they have a complex calculation for example for example that there is a transport company they are confused that which costing uh, method should they use should it be a portion on cost per kilometer cost per passenger no so there is a complex calculation and obviously in order to reduce the complexity they will be using cost per passenger per kilometer cost per passenger per kilometer and their costing is a little bit complex so i'm not saying that it cannot be used it can be used but there are some complexity complex calculations right it is difficult It is difficult to define unit. That is, is it per unit, per kilometer, per passenger? What is a per unit, right? So it can be used in the service industry. 
target costing can be used in the service industry but there are some challenges which we have discussed here right now we have completed the topic of target costing we have completed the topic of activity based costing yesterday and now i am going to start with uh, another topic and that is the uh, that is the life cycle costing that's the life cycle costing right so here i am opening this life cycle costing this is the life cycle costing as you are having this in your handout section as well this is the life cycle costing this is the graph a question and september december 2020 case otq i would love to show this thing first that what are you doing you should know it that what are you actually doing so let's move ahead for the understanding of the topic life cycle costing what is this life cycle costing first of all there is a different thing life cycle and there is a different terminology costing so life cycle is something else life cycle costing is something else right now we will be understanding this life cycle with real world example some practical examples uh, see that life cycle principle cannot be used on the basic necessities of the products like that uh, like uh, there's a water in this bottle and the life of this water and the life of this water cannot be ended i need it i need it right from my birth to the death because it is not applicable on the basic necessity life cycle principle is usually applied on the products which are technologically uh, which is technical in nature right which is technical in nature so life cycle principle is applicable on that technological products let's say for example let's say for it's a product life cycle right it's not a company life cycle it's a product life cycle let's say for example we used to have a scanner machine in our offices right now they are still there even the very well established organization they are also having the scanner machine when i was working in the factory in the accounts department when i am me talking about myself harisan if i have seen that um, thing in the in the practical life but nowadays but whether it was uh, the company when, uh, where i was working in the firm in the previous institutions even this in this institute tabaniji school of accountancy in tabaniji academy we have the scanner machine but nowadays the scanner is just a click away for example you pick up your mobile phone you pick up your mobile phone you just take a picture to the scanner application to the scanner application see that the need for the scanned document is not over yet but the demand for that particular product is getting declined and it is being replaced by the new product so the life cycle principle what do you mean by the term life cycle there was a life start of that scanner machine it is now at the declining mode or maybe at some other phase so similarly similarly when the similarly there is a birth of the human and there is a death of the human right there is a birth there is a death of the human similar is go for the product this is a life cycle of the product it's a life cycle of the product life cycle it's basically the expected time period and remember that you are doing the costing and that means that that means that you are making it as the estimations you are making the estimation so what is the life cycle of the this is the expected life cycle that means time period expected life cycle in which a particular product remain popular in the market it's the uh, expected life cycle time period the time period does not mean one year it does not mean one year no 
it's actually the time period it is actually the time period in which a particular product remains popular in the market or expected to remain popular these are the these are the general stages of life cycle it is not 100% sure it's not 100% sure that every product every product reaches all the life cycle stage these uh, these are simply the expected stages in the life and these are not even the these are not even the number of years these are the stages let's say when a person when a person is born and it is its childhood then it gets mature further mature then becomes old and ultimately uh, goes to the grave so this is this, this these are actually the expected life cycle of the product right these are not the actual so see that it is horizontally there is a placement of time and there is sales and profits here these are the sale revenue and obviously there's a difference of cost and these are the profits this is the stage of development number one number two number three number four and number five this is development introduction growth maturity and decline introduction growth maturity decline in the development stage there is no profit obviously the profit cannot uh, you cannot achieve the profit because this is the stage when you are incurring when you are having high cost when you are having the high cost when you are having the high cost of research and development so in the development phase there is no profit there is only cost there is only cost right in the introduction phase in the introduction phase the product is newly launched the product is newly launched this is known as the introduction phase the product is newly launched number three is that growth phase in the growth phase in the growth phase your acceptance the acceptance of the product you are achieving the acceptance of the product that is the product is getting more and more popular so that is product is accepted in the market it's the maturity and that's known as the peak stage that you are at the top you are at the top level see that you are uh, you are the market leader kind of thing if i can say you uh, like in these um, example of social media google facebook and all these are famous social medias they are at the maturity phase because they are market leaders and now the point comes when it is the demand is getting reduced the demand is reduced right and this is the stage this is a very critical stage this is a very critical stage maturity in this maturity stage the organizations should bring something new in your product or services i can give you the live example you all are using whatsapp we all are using whatsapp and you know there are regular updates in the whatsapp whatsapp is kind of a market leader in this communication uh, era right so uh, because it's easy to communicate it is easy to communicate anywhere anytime so whatsapp is at the maturity stage and it quite may be possible that whatsapp is having the uh, threat to be declined because in uh, in this technological equipped environment every every company is trying to become a market leader and it quite may be possible that any new services can be uh, introduced in the market and there is a threat to my product so the message is that in that maturity stage in that maturity stage companies should bring something innovative in order to be interactive regular see i am giving the example of whatsapp if you go uh, some time back there was not the option of delete for everyone now it is there now previously when you go there was a voice clipping and now they have introduced 1x 1.5x and 2x speed you know they are getting regular updates in order to increase the maturity phase so that people will be in contact with the product or services similarly if you go um, uh, probably one or two years back it was not the reels on the facebook and right now it's there so what i'm trying to say that they are trying to introduce a 
innovative features. So when you will be introducing the new and innovative features in the maturity stage, your product lifespan can be increased, right? So in this maturity phase, in this maturity phase, you should increase, introduce, introduce the innovative elements. to increase the lifespan. So this should be the case. There should be the case that you should introduce, you should introduce that uh, innovative features. All right. Uh, yes, Faisal Abdullah, uh, we had solved the last company question of target costing and Aisha Suman Faisal Abdullah. Yes, the last class, I mean the day one will be uploaded on YouTube channel of ACC Pakistan and you people are in the WhatsApp group. I will be sharing the link of the first class as well. Don't you people worry about it. Now let's move ahead. So this is basically the product life cycle. This is basically the product life cycle. This is not the costing. This is the life cycle. And what is the life cycle costing means? The word costing means estimating the uh, future cost. And this is a life cycle, right? Expected popular time period. And costing means And costing means estimations of the cost. Costing means estimation of the cost. And remember one thing, the cost is production. Plus non-production. So in life cycle costing, in life cycle costing, in life cycle costing, you should you are actually making a profile of the cost. Making the profile of the cost. Over the. Entire life. Not just one year. So this is the differentiating point between life cycle costing and the traditional costing that you should make the cost profile over the entire life, not just year one. It is a traditional costing and here and here you can calculate cost per unit. You can calculate cost per unit like. Total life cost. Divided by total expected life units. Total expected life cycle units, right? So this is total life cycle, total life cycle cost, total expected life units. Uh, this is the way to calculate the uh, cost per unit in a life, right? Now let's move ahead for the uh, for the examples questions MCQs and then we are moving towards the case OTQ as well since it may be examined in your uh, real paper. I cannot give you the hundred percent surety about this topic. It quite may be possible life cycle target throughput whatever but the costing area will be examined in case OTQ. Now let's move ahead. This is a question. This is the question in front of you. I would like all of you to have a quick look on this question and then we will be having this case OTQ. Right. And uh, then thereafter this. Life cycle would be finished. Please read this question.
you are supposed to calculate the life cycle cost per unit, right? You are supposed to calculate the life cycle cost per unit. All right, students, uh, it quite may be possible that you have uh, read this question. Now uh, we will be. I'm giving you one minute window. Uh, can you people please solve this question? Please solve this question. Is there any answer for it? Is there any answer? Mm, yes, it quite may be possible. It quite may be possible. It quite may be possible that your answers are right. Now see that what is the question here? The company has estimated four years life of the product. Depreciation charge per year is 28,500. One question which students ask me that uh, whether uh, we need to take the depreciation the answer is yes it's not actually the depreciation if you are receiving the cost of machine that is total cost that is total cost divided by life right so that that um, total cost and that you will be able to calculate depreciation so the the life is of four years and the depreciation is 28500 the life is four years and the depreciation is 28500 when you will be multiplying you will be getting the total cost you will be getting the total cost of the machine which is necessary which is necessary for this uh, which is necessary for this um, production right so here we are taking this depreciation considering it considering it as the cost of the machine right considering it as a cost of the machine so here calculate the life cycle cost per unit 
so i will be taking at cost of machine that is 28500 multiply by 4 that's 28500 into 4 that's 11400 and then there will be very uh, total four years it's total four year production cost 600000 That is 600,000. And secondly, there is variable selling overheads five per unit. Variable selling overhead five throughout the life, throughout the life. And one thing is that production and selling units are these. Will you please total it the selling units over the life? It's 2,000 plus 2,500 plus 3,000 plus 5,000. And that is totaling. 12,500 units over the entire life. It's 12,500 units over the entire life, right? It's 12,500 units over the entire life. So I need to calculate it accordingly. That is the variable selling overheads dollar five throughout the life. That's variable selling overheads. That's variable selling overheads that is dollar five into twelve thousand five hundred units five into twelve thousand five hundred units that would become sixty two thousand five hundred i have incorporated these things training cost over the life fifty thousand and research marketing marketing and other costs three hundred thousand that is training costs and that is marketing plus research and development. That is 50,000 and that is 300,000. The total cost, can you? Yes, you might be calculating with me. That is the total cost of life. one one four plus six hundred plus sixty two point five plus fifty plus three hundred that is one one two six five double zero isn't it one one two six five double zero divided by twelve thousand five hundred units divided by units in life so that is life cycle cost per unit. That is life cycle cost per unit. That's 90.12. And your answer, uh, those who were responding me in the question box, they are having the accurate and correct answer. F Rizan, uh, is there any confusion with this calculation? Can you please tell me your confusing element by the way first tell me uh, were you connected from the start of the question production cost right okay the production cost is that production cost is total 600,000 it is total 600,000 it's total four years production cost 600,000 four years total production cost and while taking the life cycle costing we take production as well as non-production cost so we will have to take training cost marketing cost and all the cost so i had calculated first all the cost over the expected life and that i had divided it with the units expected in a life and simply i got a life cycle cost per unit that is 90.12 uh what's your name f reason f reason is it now fine okay okay that's good now we have successfully completed this life cycle example now let's move ahead for this um september december 2020 question september december 2020 question midhurst company and this is the question of this is the question of life cycle 
this is the question of life cycle right so first of all let's have a quick look like you are in the exam and you are having this case otq question one two three you notice that this is a talking about life cycle and then you should uh, read out the question keeping in mind the concepts of life cycle so i am giving you just a few one or two minute take one or two minute to read this question right from this uh, from this area and then i will be solving it Now, um, now I'm going to read this thing uh, from start. Midas company manufactures air conditioning units and is considering an investment in a new unit that will be used in modern office buildings. Advances in technology mean that this unit is more sensitive to the changes and variations in the temperature and therefore it can regulate uh, airflow and um, heating more efficiently midders company competitors currently do not have do not have an equivalent product that can offer these features midders company expect to sell 10000 units over the predicted 5 year life the finance director has just prepared the initial costing for the unit as follows these are the things and all the things are in triple zero all the things are in triple zero right these are the things you need to calculate in triple zero and so uh, but one thing to be important one thing to be noted is that all these are the cost 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 this is on per unit this is on per unit and this is our per unit rest of the other costs are the total cost over the life rest of the other costs are the total cost over the life and this is for the 10000 units this is for the 10000 units and rest of the other costs are for the uh, for the total cost over the life and we need to calculate these costs right now uh, keep this thing in mind the finance director plans to use life cycle costing to measure the profitability of the new product profitability of the new product they are trying to measure the profitability of the new product right and secondly and secondly um, the ceo has asked for some more information about the life cycle as she's not sure whether it is right to use the production director has reviewed the costing in detail and suggested a couple of changes he is enthusiastic about product and believe that modifications could be made 
to prolong product's life, but wonders when the best time would be to make changes to the product. Number one, according to the life cycle costing method, which two of the following statements regarding the stages of life cycle are true? Which two? You need to you need to identify, pick up the two statements which are correct with respect to the stages of life cycle, right? So um, will you people go through all these four points? Just go through all these four points and then I will be solving this. Number one, at the introduction stage, at the introduction stage, further capital would be while will be needed as production capacity needs to increase to meet the demand. Yes, it quite may be possible. When you are forcing that in introduction stage, you are forcing that your demand is going to be increased. Your demand is going to be increased when you are forcing that in the introduction phase right so you need to inject more capital you need to inject more capital so that your production capacity could be increased to meet the demand and this is absolutely right number two the maturity stage occurs when the market has reached the saturation point and bought enough of the product this is not the case this is a matter of decline when the market has reached the saturation point no, that's not the thing. Maturity stage is that when you are at the peak level, not going to be declined. Number three, the majority of the product life cycle cost, as you can see that these are the majority costs can be estimated. And according to the according to the analysis, according to the analysis, 70 to 90 percent of the cost can be estimated at the design stage. 70 to 90 percent of the cost can be estimated in the design stage, right? So majority of the cost. Majority of the cost and you can see that these are the majority of the cost. Can be estimated. In advance. It's approx 90%. You can say 70 to 90%, right? So uh, this answer is absolutely yes. The majority of the product life cycle costs are determined by the decision which are made at the design and development stage that this cost would be incurred that cost would be incurred that cost could be incurred so approximately 90 percent of the cost can be estimated the last point obviously oh, it would be wrong because we need two uh, statements which should be correct right we need to the growth stage the growth stage when sale will have reached the peak no it's a maturity stage. It's a maturity stage when your sales are at the peak and become stable, right? So uh, and will be the most profitable stage. No, it, it is the it is the maturity stage. So these two statements are wrong. Number two, uh, what is the cost per unit of the new air condition using a life cycle costing to the nearest dollar? I am solving uh, this question here. I'm solving this question here in this uh, in this PDF file, right? I'm solving this question in this PDF file here so that I will be able to save it. Which cost per unit? Uh, what is the cost per unit uh, using the life cycle costing? And remember that just uh, click click the picture or you are having the handout in your mobile phone or in the in your laptop. These are the costs, but this is the per unit cost. This is the I will be using different color for per unit cost, right? So you need to calculate it accordingly. I have already written it down these costs so that I have to solve it. And now I am going to I am going to write these things. And these are the per unit cost, right? And this is for 10,000 units. These are the per unit cost. I need to calculate the total cost, total cost, and then cost per unit. So here I need I will be calculating the total cost. I will be calculating the total cost here. Previously it was 6200 that was the total cost. Secondly, it was 33,450. It's a total cost plus 
six eight five. That is the total cost plus forty two into ten thousand. Forty two forty two into ten thousand. Why? Because it was forty two. Forty two. The above the triple zeros are getting ignored. Forty two into ten thousand. Right, and this was a per unit cost plus nine eight plus nine eight four seven zero plus nine eight four seven zero plus nine into ten thousand units plus ten thousand three hundred plus four into ten thousand units. And these are the things which is based on per unit, and rest of the other costs are total. That is double seven nine zero plus two three four five zero. So the total cost. What is the total cost? Please calculate the total cost here. Three three four fifty. I'm calculating it, but by myself as well. One double seven six eighty five plus forty two into ten thousand plus nine eight four seven zero plus I'm solving all the things. It is nine zero seven nine zero seven three four five, and see that these all co costs are ignoring triple zero because we are not taking the triple zero. And now I need total cost per unit, so that will be nine zero seven three four five. This was ignoring triple zero, so I will be dividing by ten only. So if you want to take ten thousand completely, you should write three zeros at the top priority, right? So divided by ten, that would be ninety thousand seven thirty five. That would be, and this is the answer, ninety thousand seven thirty five. This is the answer, right? So this is uh, your answer is absolutely right. Whoever calculated this, uh, option D. Yes. Uh, Mr. Aurangzeb Imam, when I'm solving that, it takes me one or two minutes to read your question. I'm explaining I'm all the thing again. All right. Don't you worry about it. OK, thank you so much for your patience. Uh, question number one, option A. First, note it down. It quite may be possible that you are noting it down. All right, that's question number one, option A. Question number one, option A. At the introduction, is it this you were talking about? All right. Now, in this, yes, uh, lemon. Uh, that means ten thousand units should not be used. Yes, you should use ten. Why? Because you should take. Because you should take the. You should take the uh, complete. You should take the complete ten thousand units. You should take the complete cost. You should take the complete cost, right, Mr. Lemon? Do you understand this thing? Because since you can observe that here, that triple zeros are being ignored. I'm ignoring this triple zero, right? Uh, lemon, is it now fine? Is it now clear so that I can proceed? Lemon. That's good. Uh, Aurangzeb Iman, your question was. At introduction stage, further capital expenditure will be needed as the production capacity need to increase the market demand to meet the demand. 
at the introduction stage when my products is getting is being sold i am foreseeing that i am foreseeing that the next stage can be the introduction thereafter growth i need more capacity i need more capacity to increase my production capacity and to meet the demand and for that i need to spend a much capital amount right i need to spend much capital amount for that thing so that's a very simple thing at the introduction phase if you can see that if you are in the introduction phase right at this introduction phase and you have to move forward so obviously you need to produce more and more units so you need the capital investment is it now clear aurangzeb it is now clear okay now let's proceed this is question number 3 and uh, please i have extracted this question just because of question number 3 it's really a very good requirement simple and good requirement please read this thing what would be the revised material cost revised and they are bringing some change they are bringing some change in the in the costing and so definitely when there is a change the cost would be revised the cost would be revised okay so the production director has suggested the following change for the costing of the new unit currently the material costs are 20% of variable production cost currently whenever there is a change you need to have the information of the current material so that is the um, variable cost is 42000 variable cost is 42000 right variable cost is 42000 and uh, currently the material cost is 20% of the variable cost right okay so this is the thing i am not solving this here i am not solving this here question number 3 I'm not solving this question number three at the bottom of this page. I'm solving it here, right? Question number three. It is saying that twenty percent of the cost is material cost. Okay. Now I'm writing that cost of material. That's cost of material is. Forty-two thousand into uh, what was the percentage? It was twenty percent. Sorry, it was twenty percent. So currently my cost is twenty percent, right? This is the cost of my material. This is the cost of my material. That's forty-two thousand multiplied by twenty percent. That is dollar eighty-four hundred. This is the current cost. Current cost of material this is the current cost of material right now let's move ahead uh, it is saying that one of the materials used is stainless steel which is budgeted at 2000 per unit okay including in 8400 there is one material which cost 2000 dollars here that is including 2000 dollars and the remaining is 6400 obviously and the remaining is 6400 this is the cost of stainless this is actually the thing that is one of the material because that's the total material cost but here but an alternate corrosion resistant metal costing 25% less can be used from that 2000 per unit 25% less can be used because we are having some alternate material we are having some alternate material and that will be used 25% less that will be used 25% less 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 okay so that means that means this will be used 25% less so it will cost to me
1500 here it would become 1500 right and next it would be the production director believes a 15 percent discount 15 percent discount can be negotiated for the remainder material it can be negotiated for the remainder material so for the remainder and the remainder is 6400 and now i will be taking it 85 percentage that is 15 percent discount so it would become five double four zero and obviously my collective cost would be and obviously my collective cost would be the revised cost it's six nine four zero isn't it six nine four zero and that's my revised cost and that is my revised cost so it is a very simple calculation but i um i am uh, you're welcome you're welcome but i'm explaining it in a simple manner that you can uh, understand this requirement that's six nine four zero right that's six nine four zero six nine four zero it is my revised material cost now let's move for the question number four question number four and five question number four is very uh, simple the production director has asked about the implication of production planning if the company wishes to extend the product life cycle at what stage is the new unit is most likely to go under a product development yes at what stage the product is likely to go under product development the new unit and that's the maturity stage because in that stage you are trying to redevelop your product that is bringing the innovative features now question number five the chief executive wants to brief the advantages of using life cycle costing which of the following statements related to the advantages of life cycle costing are correct which of the following number one it draws management attention to the cost of the product which other costing methods usually treat as a periodic cost yes i'm explaining the first point it draws the management attention <clears throat> it draws the management attention that all the costs need to be related to the product let's say there is a fixed cost and fixed cost is a periodic fixed cost right in the marginal costing but life cycle costing is saying that this is a product this is a product cost so all the costs are included in the life cycle all the costs are included in the life cycle all right so this is the correct statement number two it focuses on measuring the production cost from concept to withdrawal from concept that is r and d to withdrawal that is decline from concept to withdrawal rather than reviewing the cost on period by period basis the answer is yes because it is measuring the performance of the product from start to decline from concept to withdrawal number three it focuses on it focuses on what customers are prepared to pay for a product and establish cost budget based on expected selling price the answer is false it is the target costing concept it's not the life cycle concept it is actually the target costing concept so this is wrong so that one and two are correct and we are not finding one and two so that means option b is correct four is saying that it aids understanding of relationship between decision making at the design stage and the cost of other functions such as marketing yes it measures the cost with respect to the stages of the life cycle so option number one two and four are actually the correct one these are the correct one right okay uh, lemon i'm addressing your question i took 42000 i took 42000 from here it is saying that currently material costs are 20 percent of variable production cost and in the above there is the variable production cost which is 42000 right lemon do you understand this thing 42000 you were talking about famine
now that's good now students we are taking a 15 minutes break uh because there we are having pre time as well so let's take 15 minutes break right so we will be resuming at Six forty PM PST, right? Around six forty five PM uh, PST. Do not disconnect yourself. I am just turning off my camera and my video. I will be resuming it after exactly fifteen to twenty minutes near around. So be connected.
Uh, hello, students. We are now back from the break, and I hope you all are here. My voice screen video is all clear to all of you. Will you people please reply me in the question box? My voice screen video is all clear. All right. All right, students. Now that uh, we are proceeding with this lecture of uh, life cycle costing, and then we have to move towards the another topic. Now here, see that note. Point to be noted is that what may be the successful strategies in life cycle. The successful strategies in life cycle is that. Uh, since that you can uh, you can easily estimate approximately 70 to 90 percent of the cost 70 to 90 percent of the cost in advance so there is a very strong argument that you should uh, you should use the cost control technique right from the start since you can since you can estimate since you can estimate that uh, your esteem uh, your uh, cost 90 percent of the cost can be estimated so that's a very good news for you if you are successful in estimating 70 to 90 percent of the cost in advance, then you should exercise the cost control element right from the start from the design stage of the product. And one more important thing, if you are launching the product in one city in one state, so you should launch throughout the country or you should go um, to uh, to uh, to launch this product globally. So it will increase the return over the life, right? So what successful strategy you can bring into the product that that cost control right from the start cost control right from the start all right you can increase increase the sales by introducing by introducing the product into different other market segments right by introducing the products into different other market segments by you can say introducing the products in other market one more thing when your research is completed you know uh, there might be threat to your confidential information through big data or through any kind of hacking or even your key employee may left so as soon as your research is completed as soon as your as soon as your research work is completed you should you should you should launch the product immediately. You should launch the product immediately as soon as your research work is completed. So this is a very good message for the life cycle is that when your research work is getting completed, when you're when you're finished with your research and development, so launch launch the launch the product immediately as soon as possible. So I'm saying that launch the product. As soon as possible after research and development and whatever the marketing technique whatever the marketing technique you will be using whatever the uh, pricing technique you would be using whatever the technique use that technique there is no uh, argument on that but try to achieve break-even point as soon as possible because there is a limited time there's a limited life. There's a limited life. Try to achieve the break-even point as soon as possible. So achieve the break-even point. As soon as possible. So 
so these are some favorable advices in the uh, product life cycle right now these are the things now let's go back now go uh, move forward this is the question and probably this would be the last question for this life cycle then we will be starting throughput accounting uh, which of the following statements are true regarding the justification of the use of life cycle costing please read all these for information and then we will be solving this question but read it with a very thorough attention All right, now uh, let's proceed with this thing and uh, I'm going to explain these uh, statements so we will be able to note down which product, uh, sorry, which statement is correct. Life cycle are becoming increasingly short. This means that initial costs are increasingly important component in the product's overall cost. Is this statement true? The answer is yes. Because nowadays, if I can give you the example nowadays, as the technology is getting technology is getting uh, increased day by day, technology is getting increased day by day. So your uh, so your you can say so your uh, products life cycle are getting shorter. So your initial so your initial cost is very important. Number two, number two is that. Number two is that product costs are increasingly weighted to start weighted. That's not the waiting for the time. That is the weightage to the start of the product life cycle and to properly understand the profitability. To understand the profitability of the product, these costs must be must be matched to the ultimate revenues. Yes, this must be matched because the costs are getting increased. The costs are getting increased and the cost must be matched. The cost must be matched with the revenue so that you can be able to. Uh, estimate your prof uh, profitability. Number three, the high cost, for example, research in the early stages in the product life cycle necessitate a high initial price. It is not true because life cycle is not about setting the selling price life cycle is not about setting the selling price life cycle is about to estimate it's not about estimating the selling price it's about linking to the cost to the revenue all right so it does not mean that you have to do you have to launch your product with a high initial selling price it's not about increasing the selling price it's about matching the cost with the revenue so this statement is not correct number 4 Traditional number four traditional capital budgeting do not attempt to minimize the cost or maximize the revenue over the life cycle. The answer is absolutely yes. It's uh, a why because traditional capital budgeting does focus on the first year result. That means one year result, but life cycle costing focuses on the entire life cycle, right? So this was the topic of life cycle, and I am now going to discuss with you people. Uh, the another topic or you can say another chapter and that is the throughput accounting. It's one of the uh, a little bit tricky and or you can say the complicated area. So here I am uh, displaying you the. File of uh, throughput accounting. It's being loaded here. Now this is yet another chapter. You can say another topic that is throughput accounting. This is a separate topic throughput accounting. Now what is throughput accounting? 
listen that throughput accounting is actually uh, the concept it is it's actually the concept to maximize the profit for the organization it is actually the concept of maximizing the uh, profitability for the organization number one if i can if i can uh, say it in a simple word that if i can it's very simply that throughput accounting deals with the limiting factors it deals with the bottlenecks it deals with the limiting factors now what is the limiting factor what is the bottleneck what is the limiting factor i'm going to explain it see that see that it it is written that it is dealing with the it is dealing with the bottleneck resource it is dealing with the bottleneck resource now what do you mean by the term bottleneck you probably are aware of the fact that you probably are aware of the fact that there are the limiting factors right there are the limiting factors in in this situation for example i need 10000 kilograms and i am having only 9000 kilograms that is i am experiencing a shortage of raw material if i need 2000 labor hours and i am having only 1800 labor hours so that means the labor hours are actually the constraints now what is throughput accounting throughput accounting it deals with the bottleneck resource now what is the bottleneck resource bottleneck resource is the constraint bottleneck is the constraint it is the barrier in the internal process it is the barrier or you can say it is a constraint in the internal process now what do you mean by the term internal process see that observe my body language as well focus on my words you need raw material right you need raw material you need raw material after purchasing the raw material repeat after purchasing the raw material you have inserted in your production process i have purchased the raw material from the market i have inserted in the production process after purchasing raw material is a very simple words after purchasing the raw materials after purchasing the raw materials the internal process might be having some barriers now those barriers are called as bottleneck so that means the bottleneck will not be the raw material the bottleneck will be either machine hours or labor hours because it is saying that constraint in the internal process in the internal process that is after purchasing focus on the word after purchasing the raw material after purchasing the raw material so that is in the internal process if i can give you the example here that you inserted the raw materials you inserted the raw materials this is the process and this is the output now in the internal process in the internal process there might be some problems and those problems are labor hours those problems are machine hours right and these problems are termed as bottleneck resource these are the bottleneck resource and remember that when there are bottleneck resource when there are bottleneck resource when there are bottleneck resource right when there are bottleneck resource obviously when there are bottleneck resource obviously the output would be restricted the output would be restricted so due to the bottleneck your output is restricted so anything which acts as the barrier that will definitely restrict your output anything which acts as a barrier that will be restricting your output so the bottleneck uh, are either labor or machine arts now let's move ahead that's theory of constraints toc theory of constraints that's not test of control uh, if any one of you had studied the double paper so uh, it's a theory of constraint and theory of constraint is actually it's a theory 
it is a theory right it is a theory which says that in a short term in it in a short term short term short term that means they are indicating less than a year less than one year or you can say less than or equal to one year in a short term it says that in every process it's a theory right it's a theory in every process there is a bottleneck in every process there is a bottleneck resource company should focus to eliminate the bottleneck resource yes if my bottleneck resource would be eliminated definitely my output would be increased and simultaneously there is a possibility that when one bottleneck is eliminated then other process may become bottleneck it quite may be possible that these are bottleneck i eliminated the bottleneck resource i am more focusing towards the more production and it quite may be possible that when one process the bottleneck process is eliminated the next process uh, can be the bottleneck right so one when one bottleneck is eliminated then other process may become it's not saying absolutely it's saying may become the bottleneck right so this is actually the theory of constraint so identification of bottleneck and eliminating is the continuous process so identification of bottleneck and eliminating it is a continuous process according to this theory according to this theory this is known as the this is simply the toc that is theory of constraints so according to uh, so we can say that finding and eliminating is a regular process right because uh, it's not always be the case that your production is 100% 100% available there are some barriers there are some bottlenecks the machine may be damaged there uh, the machine may needs to be repaired the labor may become uh, maybe on the medical leave there are so many barriers right there are so many barriers i will be writing something on this blank page and then i will be starting the question right so this is the blank page i have intentionally left to note it down something point to be noted is that point to be noted is that uh, my resources my resources are being split into two categories number one number one is that of direct labor plus overheads because this is known as the conversion cost this is known as the conversion cost right and i have separately placed direct material purchased now see that there are three resources material labor and overheads right material is not a big issue material is not an issue in fact here in bottleneck in this there would be bottleneck right there would be bottleneck so that means we have some limited labor hours we have some limited overheads we can call it a limited availability and when there is a limited availability you will be calling it as a fixed because you are not having more than this available requirement you are not having more than this available requirement so a direct material and direct labor it's a it's a bottleneck all right they are limited available or you can say they are limited fixed for the time period they are limited fixed for the time period right they are limited fixed for the time period and so this is only assumed as the variable cost this is only assumed at the variable as the variable cost now in throughput accounting first observe me sale minus all the variable cost is contribution right when you minus all the variable cost from the sale the resulting figure is called as contribution sale minus all the variable cost is the contribution right now sale minus material cost only because we have some limited we have some limited conversion cost we do not have too much uh, labor or machine arts we have some limited thing all right so a uh, sale minus you can say that sales less direct material purchased the resulting figure is called as throughput what is throughput throughput or you can say this is the throughput contribution so sale minus only direct material purchase and when you will be deducting further conversion cost then you would be having the net profit 
you would be having the what's the net profit so this is the pro forma in uh, throughput accounting to make uh, to calculate the final net profit now uh, what is the concept here now what is the concept here to study this uh, throughput accounting what is the concept here what is the concept here? the concept here is that uh, we have some limited resources we have some limited resources right we have limited resources we have some barriers so we have simultaneously we have bottleneck resource we have bottleneck resource right we have bottleneck resource all right so we need this cost is fixed this cost is periodically fixed it is written here so when something is fixed you do not need to you know you do not need to consider that thing because it is fixed regardless of any production or any kind of thing this cost would be fixed this cost would be fixed regardless of anything right so you need to maximize the throughput you need to maximize the throughput you need to maximize the throughput so we have some limited resources and so this is the throughput right this is the throughput so what you are supposed to do what you are supposed to do you will be calculating you will be calculating selling price that is on per unit you will be calculating direct material that will be again on per unit now you will be having throughput return you will be having throughput on per unit and you have to divide you know that there is a contribution per limiting factor but here we will be having bottleneck we will be having bottleneck and so it is bottleneck and bottleneck will be either labor or machine hours either labor hours or machine hours right either labor or machine hours because material is not the limiting factor it's not the constraint here so this is bottleneck that is hours per unit now this figure would be called as per hour this figure is known as return per bottleneck hour it's written per bottleneck hour right this figure is the return per bottleneck hour i'm doing it underline next now a uh, next thing is here that material cost is counted now we have left with conversion cost we have left with conversion cost that is direct labor plus production overheads that would be the total factory cost so you need cost per hour so you would be taking total factory cost divided by total bottleneck hours total bottleneck hours right so here it is number one return per hour and that is you have to place your focus on bottleneck resource so you will be having a return per bottleneck hour you will be having cost per bottleneck hour and you need to calculate tpar that is tpar tpar stands for throughput accounting ratio that is throughput accounting ratio so that is actually the return upon conversion cost per hour that is per hour and if your tpar if your tpar is greater than one less than one or equal to one if it is greater than one then it means profit is expected less than one loss is expected and if it is equal to one that means that is the break even point right so this is actually the measurement of the uh, this is actually the measurement of the profitability in the throughput accounting so throughput accounting actually deals with this uh, return per hour because you need to have the return on per unit no not at all not per unit imagine that this product is being made in four hours so you need to have you need and, and hours and hours are the limiting factor if this product is being made in four hours and hours are the limiting factor and hours are the limiting factor i do not need the return on per unit i need the return on per hour right so this will be on per hour per hour per hour and similarly cost per hour that's a measurement of per hour because hour is the bottleneck resource here either machine or labor hour 
so let's now move on to the next uh, question this is the question sky limited operates through an environment where products go through two different processes now if i can uh, before going to start this question before going to start start that i was just seeing uh, the sql before going to start this question you can see that if there are two process that is process one and there is process two your resources are being inserted and similarly your production is your product is being passed through two different processes and definitely there would be output if production if process one is slow that means it is a bottleneck if this is slow that is the bottleneck any process due to which because let's say if one is the assembling department and another one is the finishing department no uh, because of any particular department your ultimate output can be restricted because of any particular department your ultimate output can be restricted and that is the bottleneck resource ultimately so uh, this uh, product passes through two different processes that is process p and process q please read this thing what is the cloud throughput per hour now they are trying to say throughput per hour that means return per hour all right so please read this question very thoroughly and i will be solving it quickly hurry up read this question All right. Now, uh, the question here is that there are eight machines operating at 90% capacity. We need actual time. We need active time, right? There are eight machines in the process P. In the process P, There are eight machines at 90% capacity. Each machine produces six units per hour. Each machine produces six units per hour. Okay. Now, there are eight machines who are operating at 90% capacity and they do produce six units per hour. Can you people tell me what this figure is actually showing? what is this 43.2 can you people just type in the question box what do you mean by that uh, uh, by this figure 43.2 can anyone tell me no no it's not time available it's not time availability it's not time availability no not at all no yes yes it's no, it's not machine arts. It's not machine art. See that I am interpreting it again. In one hour, 
it is written that each machine produces nine units in one hour. Sorry, six. Sorry, six units. I was talking about product P. Each machine produces six units, six units in one hour, and there are eight machines. So this 43.2 would be units in one hour. Right. These are 43.2 units in one hour. And what would be the next story? What would be the next story? What would be the next story? The next story would be that these 43.2 units. These 43.2 units will be transferred. Would be transferred where? It would be transferred to yes product Q. Now see that these 43.2 units would be transferred to uh, process Q. So here I will be writing here. Process Q. Process Q. There are six machines and the same story is there. They are producing nine units. They are producing nine units, right? So six machines. Into 85 percent. Into nine and the answer is. 45.9. Sorry in one year. No. Units in one hour. All right. So uh, which process is a bottleneck? Yes, process P is a bottleneck because it is uh, because in process P there are 43.2 units which are being transferred to process Q. And process Q has the ability process Q has the ability to make 45.9 units. So which product is the bottleneck? It's obviously process P is the bottleneck. Because because of this output is getting restricted. Process P is the bottleneck. All right, so can you people please calculate this throughput per hour and give your answer in the question box? That should be written per bottleneck R. All right. Okay, uh, Shushmita, I am repeating it again. Uh, do you uh, please um, reply in the question box? Do you agree with this 43.2 units? How they are computed? Okay. Now, now see that 43.2 units are produced in process P. They are being transferred to process Q, and process Q has the ability. Process Q has got the ability for 45.9 units. For this 45.9 units, right? So let's say process P 43.2. They are being transferred to process Q. And obviously, if they have got 45.9 uh, units in a capacity, the ultimate output will be 43.2 because the legacy is coming from process Q that is restricted and the output will be 43.2 units despite of the fact that 45.9 is the maximum capacity in the entire factory. So process B is the bottleneck, right? 
Do you understand this thing now? Uh, Ms. Shishmida, do you understand this thing? Okay, that's great. Yes, Gaurav. Uh, Gaurav, no, 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 not at all. It's not correct. Aurangzeb, your answer is right. Now, without mentioning uh, the name of the students, program, I'm going to solve this question. So this is process P, which is the bottleneck. This is process P is the bottleneck, right? And now here, now here, I am going to solve this. The selling price is, what is the selling price? The selling price is 20, but 15% discount would be given. 15% discount. So it's 20 into 85%. So that would become 20 into 85%. That is $1.17, which is the selling price. And I need the raw material cost. And I need the material cost. That is, where is the material cost? Yes, it's five. Material cost is $5, right? So 17, five. 17 minus five, that is $1.12. And that is dollar twelve. That's on per unit, and that will be termed as throughput per unit divided by bottleneck. Which process is bottleneck? Process P is the bottleneck, and it currently takes zero point two hours and zero point three hours to make a unit machine P and Q respectively. And now I will be taking that process uh, P bottleneck. So it is 0 0.2. So you should simply divide it by 0 0.2 and you will be getting a $60 per hour. That's a bottleneck. And that's return per hour. That's return per hour, right? So that's a very simple thing. That is a bottleneck. That is a bottleneck and so it is the 60 per hour is the return per hour. It's not calculating the entire throughput accounting ratio. They are just calculating through a uh, return per hour. Now that's um, that's the solution and now and now I'm going for the uh, next question. This is the simple question following our which of the following is the throughput accounting ratio for this product. So you need you just need to calculate throughput accounting ratio throughput accounting ratio that is TPAR. Now see that question the following information is available for a single product units produce 500 time taken 200 hours maximum time available 200 hours material purchase material used you will be taking material purchased because it is the throughput that is after purchasing the raw material that is after purchasing the raw material right so material purchase is 3000 material use we will not be considered because i have purchased i have purchased the uh, uh, the quantity the certain quantity of the raw material i have purchased a certain quantity of the raw material but i am not able to use it I have purchased the quantity of raw material, but I'm not able to use it because of the binding cons because of the constraint because of the constraint limiting factor or barrier, right? So I have purchased the I have purchased the uh, raw materials right now. Labor and overheads. It's collectively it's collectively the. 3500. Sale is $9,000. Raw material C always take the purchase figure because it, it ignores the movement of stock. That's 3000. And that would be 6000, right? So 6000 would be total throughput. Total throughput and now I will be having. Total conversion cost. That would be dollar three thousand five hundred, right? So I need and what is the maximum time available to me? That is 200 hours. I do not have enough time. I do not have enough time in this question. That is only 200 hours, right? That is only 200 hours. And so I will be taking that time. So simple at all. 
so I will be having return per hour and cost per hour. So that is throughput and that is 6000. Per hour that is 6000 divided by 200 that is dollar 30. Per hour now this is the return per hour. And I will be having. I will be having dollar 17.5. That is cost per hour. That's one number two that is conversion cost. Per hour so simply you need to calculate the TPAR. TPAR. Sorry, it's TPAR. That is return per hour 30 over cost per hour 17.5. That's 1.7. That's TPAR, right? That is a TPAR. That is a TPAR. Uh, shows it Mahmood because uh, this is a matter uh, of the labor cost is assumed to be fixed. That is why we did not consider that. Now, um, let me ask you that all of you are in the WhatsApp group. All of you are in the WhatsApp group. All of you are in the WhatsApp group. That's good. Now the WhatsApp group uh, link had already been shared there. All right. Now, as students, we have left with um, Michelle. Hurry, you are not here. All right. The WhatsApp group will be. Uh, the link is shared. The link is just shared. You people can join the WhatsApp group. The link had been shared. All right. The link had been shared. Now, now, as students, we have got the. Now students all right Faisal. Now uh, I'm going for the next slide. That is the assumptions in throughput accounting. It assumes only material as the variable cost. It assumes conversion cost labor and overheads as a fixed cost. It rejects over stocking and preferred GID no closing stock because with the intention and throughput accounting aims to maximize the profit. Throughput aims to maximize the real profit which is achieved by selling all the goods, no overstocking, no overstocking throughput is actually um, aims to maximize the profit. It was originally started as a performance measurement tool. It was originally started as a performance measurement tool that how your performance is within the limited availability of the resources and performance is being measured according to TPAR that is profitability. That is what the profitability, right? So the performance is measured according to TPAR. That is a profitability. So assumptions in throughput accounting. Now uh, you are having one case OTQ, and that is the uh, the following scenario relates to one to five. That's a solar system, and this is the case study, right? And I am telling you that the uh, these are the question which is based on the theory of constraints and onto this. Stupid accounting, right? So I need to use this blank sheet. For it, I think I should close on uh, all these. Other uh, slides. These are a few results which I have shared for your motivation. For your motivation, right? That uh, if these students can do, you can also do, right? So don't worry about this. You can achieve the success. I should close all these windows. So that it is easy for me to move from one screen to the next screen. Now, 
uh, this is the question and I am telling you that this question number one uh, is not related to the case study specifically. This is a simple thing. A newly appointed trainee at solar system is having a question as she is confused about the term bottleneck. Which of the following would be your answer to her to define the bottleneck? What uh, which resource is a bottleneck? I am telling you the bottleneck resource is that which is in short supply. That means demand is more and your supply is restricted. So that is actually the D answer when the demand of the resource is greater than the capacity of the resource, right? When the demand is greater than the capacity of the resource. So this is actually the uh, bottleneck resource when your demand is uh, getting increased than your available capacity. Now they are selling two products and question number two is about calculating TPAR for both large panels and the small panels for both large panel and small panel up to two decimals. We need to calculate TPAR now. Now I need to. Now I need to calculate this TPAR for these two products. Let's start with this question. Let's start with this question. And remember one thing we need active hours, right? I will be solving it here. That is. Solar system. Case OTQ. Throughput. Now for option number one, it was clearly over there. It's number two that we need to calculate TPAR and you all know that how to calculate TPAR that is return per hour and conversion cost per hour. Now simply moving towards this question. Uh, please read this uh, question very quickly. Have a quick look on this question. All right. Now, whatever the information you have read, uh, now let's do it together because we are having a short time period. Bottleneck resource. Solar system make two type of solar panels. Now I'm reading the punchline. They are available from seven to eight. That is 13 hours. They are using machine C, machine M, machine A. These are the information selling price and material cost here out of this is 12 million cost of labor and all factory overheads now that means that it is the conversion cost it is the conversion cost out of 3 13 hours workers take one hour lunch break remember we always need the active hours we always need the active hours. So there are 13 hours minus one hour break. So that means 12 hours I need actively. 
right? 12 hours active. 12 hours active. It is written that uh, one more important thing for you. The good news is that they have identified machine M as a bottleneck. These are the things they have correctly identified bottleneck, which is machine M 1.4 and 0 0.6. And remember one thing machine for the remaining machine C is utilized 85% machine M and A are utilized 90%. All right, and one important thing is that in the above in the first paragraph it is written that they are operating for 50 weeks. Five days in a week and this question is a yearly data. This question is having a yearly data five days a week. There are 50 weeks. All right now see that 12 hours daily. 12 hours daily. There are five days and there are. 50 weeks. So that means 12. Into 5 into 50 that becomes. 3000 hours and out of these 3000 hours machine M is being utilized 90%. So that means your maximum available time is 90% for machine M because in throughput we have to place our focus on the bottleneck and that becomes 2700 hours machine M actively. This is 2700 hours right now. Here it is written that 12 million each year at the plant 12 million each year conversion cost is 12 million so my conversion cost is 12 million and for 2700 hours so i need cost per hour that is 12 thousand thousand 2700 so that is 4,444.44 per hour. That is the cost per hour. That is the cost per hour, right? That is the cost per hour and that is known as the conversion cost per hour. That is the conversion cost per hour. Now uh, we need to calculate the throughput accounting ratio. We need to calculate throughput accounting ratio for large and small panel for large and small panel, right? The selling price is. The selling price is 12,600 and 3800. 12,600 and 3800. This is the selling price. Material cost is 4300 and 1160. So that is 4300 and 1160. That is direct material. And your resulting figure would be throughput. Your resulting figure would be throughput, right? So 12,600 minus 4,300. Now that is something 8,300. Yes, that is 8,300 dollars. And here 3,800 minus 1,160. 3,800 minus 1,160. That is 2,640. 2640 right and so and which uh, process is the bottleneck that is machine M is the bottleneck. It was written here machine M is the bottleneck and to make one unit and to make one specific unit. There uh, in the machine in the process machine M is the bottleneck right. So in order to make one unit, it needs 1.4 and 0 0.6 hours. 1.4 and 0 0.6. So here it is divided by bottleneck hours per unit. 
it was uh, 1.4 and 0 0.6. That is written per hour. That is written per hour, right? So it is dollar forty four hundred per hour. It is eighty three hundred divided by one point four. That is five nine two eight point five seven, isn't it? Yes, so we have return per hour and we need to calculate cost per hour. We have already calculated above. We need to simply put the sign of divide and that is cost per hour. That is simply 4444.44. Simply here, you will be having TPAR. That's one point double three and that's zero point double nine. So that is the thing one point double three and zero point double nine. That's one point three three and zero point double nine. That is simply that is simply the throughput accounting ratio. I just calculated the throughput accounting ratio right now. The next requirement is of the optimal production plan and remember that that product will be produced first which has got highest TPAR which is this in this case. Which is in this case. It's a large panel not the small panel right so it is the large panel. No, uh, Amna Ahmed, it is per unit. It's not the total, it's per unit. Since this is, a, you might be assuming that this is the very large amount, but this is actually the per unit, right? It is actually the per unit. You can see that this is large panel per unit, per unit. It's expensive. Now, question number three What is the optimal production mix? Optimal production mix, that's question number three. That is optimal production mix. Optimal production mix is based on is based on return per hour, or you can say the TPAR, right? For large and for small, large and small. That's return per hour. Uh, as above in part two right as above in part two that we had calculated five nine two eight and double four double zero that's five nine two eight and double four double zero so obviously this would be ranked first and this would be ranked second so initially it should be produced first but there is another requirement here there is currently a plenty of a spare capacity on machine c and machine a and machine M is a still a bottleneck. Maximum annual demand for large panel and small panel is 1800 and 1700. Assuming that large panel have a highest TPAR, yes, they are saying large is the highest TPAR. But the point is that as part of the government scheme, it has agreed to supply 1000 small panels each year. That's the contract with the government. That's a contract with the government and whatever your profitability is giving you the message, whatever the profitability, whatever the profitability is giving you the message that you need to produce that product at your top priority. Yes, obviously you should give the top priority to the large panel first since it is more profitable, but still there is a contract. So whenever there is a contract, you should follow. You should follow your contract, right? You should follow your contract. So they, uh, there are. There are thousand units to be supplied under the 
government scheme it was agreed it was agreed so first we will be producing regardless of the uh, uh, profitability ranking i am writing here but 1000 units as an agreement with the government so we will produce small first all right now see that what is the availability the availability is here as we calculated in part 2 that is 2700 hours availability of machine m 2700 hours so i have only twenty seven hundred hours that is of machine m and first i will be producing product small and the maximum demand uh, you should not su supposed to meet the maximum demand you should supposed to meet the agreed demand agreed number of units you should meet agreed number of units right and agreed are thousand units so that's it thousand units so product small thousand units will be made first as this is the contract and from the question it is straight forward available that to make one unit is 0.6 hours and remember that we need to focus on the bottleneck we need to focus on the bottleneck that is 0.6 so here you should multiply with 0.6 hours and out of 2700 out of 2700000 into 0.6 that is 600 hours sorry it's 600 hours that will be used by product small and the, whatever the remaining hour now that's 2100 whatever the remaining hours whatever the remaining hours now that will be used to make large products right and that is 2100 divided by 2100 divided by 1.4 because it's a large panel to make one unit so it is 1.4 and so it's 1500 maximum production which can be made is 1500 so what lesson we had learned that despite of the profitability ranking we need to we need to consider our contractual obligation first and the contractual obligation had been met and now you will be proceeding towards the large product so here the point is uh, my answer is the large i am making 1500 but small will be made first that is 1000 right so this is the uh this is the optimal production plan now uh, from the available time considering this available time we can easily solve out these two theoretical portion of mcq then we will be winding up and tomorrow and day after tomorrow we will be focusing on some crq kinds of questions and some other areas as well including few mcqs or whatever let's see tomorrow but but right now we need to uh, solve these theoretical questions Uh, theory of constraint is an approach to the production management which one of the following correctly describe the key financial concept will you people please go through all these uh, options key financial concept focus on the financial concept focus on the financial concept and the key financial concept is c turn raw material into into it's into into finished goods as quickly as possible 
thereby maximizing the net cash generated from sales because when you will be able to quickly turn raw material into finished goods you will be able to sell it as quick as possible and maximizing the net cash generated from the sales so see is the key financial concept sell the product as much as possible as soon as possible number five please read all these things all these four statements and try to mark the correct answer then i will be solving it i will be explaining it Following statements are mentioned about the concepts of throughput accounting and the theory of constraints. Number one, throughput was originally designed for the purpose of decision making. It's cross. It's not for the purpose of decision making. It's for the purpose of performance measurement. It's for the purpose of performance measurement, right? It was for the purpose of performance measurement. Theory of constraint, I mean the throughput accounting was originally for the purpose of performance measurement. That how you will be performing, how you will be performing uh, with respect to the, with respect to it. Theory of con throughput accounting, no? So, no, yes, yes, it's for the performance measurement, number two. Theory of constraint prefers the optimization of production performance. Yes, it's optimization of production performance. Your production performance should be optimized as much as uh, possible you should produce to sell. Number three, TOC states that at any time, there will be bottleneck resource or factor that sets a limit on the amount of throughput that is possible. The answer is yes. And throughput accounting prefers to hold large amount. No, they prefers just in time. So that is a cross. So two and three are the correct options. Two and three are the correct options, right? Two and three are the correct options. Uh, now, students, once again, uh, once again, I'm saying that I'm repeating that. You people are good at you people are good. You are here till your uh, in your skills module that is applied skills module you can achieve the success you can pass out the paper if you will work hard and smart all right so uh, we will be meeting uh, tomorrow we will be meeting tomorrow and the tomorrow's agenda would be uh, to discuss performance measurement performance measurement and this uh, this class is still here and must revise it at home you all are in the whatsapp group as well we'll be communicating later on in case of uh, any kind of support like handouts and whatever the stuff you want so uh, me Hari Sanif is signing off from this webinar see you tomorrow have a good day have a good evening bye bye take care